Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. We are on video two of the soundproofing of the shed in my backyard to make a studio. Today, I wanna to talk to you about our insulation strategy and our wall strategy that we're gonna be building. And I'm gonna be sweating during the duration of this video because it is very, very hot in this shed right now. So excuse the sweat and let's get right into it. So first of all, this is just a vertical siding wood siding on the outside. It's not very massive. It doesn't have very much weight to it. It's wanting to shake a lot all of the time because it is very light. It acts like a sounding board. A few different strategies that you could have there. You could add another layer on the outside, which would do a little bit. Um, we didn't want to go to the expense of putting like we could have clad the whole thing with a stone, which would have been really cool and added a lot of mass out there, but that's a whole lot of expense for a shed in the backyard. So we're not doing that. What we chose to do instead is add spray foam. This does two things. One, it seals up all of my air leaks. We went from floor, my bottom plate, all the way up over the ceiling, all the way around is one continuous foam shell. And then we tied that foam in with more foam into the foam of our subfloor. So we have foam around our subfloor, then we have that tied in with uh, with a can foam, the great stuff type foam around there. And then we did this spray foam on the walls. The second thing that that spray foam does is it adds rigidity. It's a closed cell spray foam. So it's going to add a lot of rigidity to this wall and it's going to make this wall vibrate less. It's not going to make the wall vibrate none. It's going to make the wall vibrate less. And for that, we used Type Bond Super Foam. This is the 200 board feet version. There's also a 600 board feet version, which is about a third of the cost per board feet foot. So if you're doing something this big, I definitely recommend doing the 600. I didn't have that luxury because we're in the middle of the coronavirus outbreak and I'm trying to get this done quickly and all they had in stock was the 200. So I spent way too much money on this. I spent probably $2,000 to spray foam this area here. Um, a professional spray foam crew would have cost about $2,000 for this same, um, this same size with closed cell. If you would have done open cell, it would have been much cheaper. So is this a good idea to do yourself? Probably not. Not for a large area like this. I think that your money is better spent with a professional crew and I think that you're going to get a better finish. Um, I just think that's going to be better. We did not have time for a spray foam crew to come in and do all this. We're trying to stay on a very short schedule. We're trying to get all of this done in two weeks. So I didn't have time to schedule somebody out for a month away. But if you have that luxury and you want to go this route, definitely, um, I think your money's better spent with professionals. So moving on from this, well, a little bit more about the spray foam. This is the type bond stuff. It's got a tip. If you decide to do it yourself, it's got a tip on it that shows you if it's too cold, it'll turn blue and you don't spray anymore. That's really good because if you get the temperature off, it's not going to set up and be a nice solid um, foam at the end. It's going to be crunchy and crusty, sort of sugary, and it's not going to work nearly as well. So highly recommend these for small little detail projects. But if you're doing a whole, even a shed, I, I just don't think that they're the right, the right thing money-wise. So moving on from that, we did the spray foam to air seal. We are sealed from our bottom foam into some can foam along the edges. And then that's tied into our spray foam here and all the way around. So we're completely airtight all the way around our structure with this foam. The second thing that it does is it adds rigidity. So my wall is more rigid because I use the spray foam. You can either add mass or rigidity. Mass is usually much cheaper, but because we're trying to get some more value too, and we we're trying to get the the um, the air sealing as well, we went with the spray foam. After the spray foam, we added our fluffy stuff. Now this fluffy fiberglass was already in the shed, so I'm reusing this fiberglass. Fiberglass. It's actually craft paper face on the backside, and I just flipped that around and put it back in there because I want all of the fluffy stuff to absorb the energy of the air as it moves back and forth. And I didn't want any um, layer of craft paper impeding that. Doesn't really make that big of a difference. Eh, probably not, but it makes me feel better knowing that the fluffy side is out. After that, we have added on this wall, we have added, this is the wall that the, that the road is on. This is our most offensive wall. Um, it gets less loud over there. We've got a big yard then our house, and then a cul-de-sac, and then another block. So there's really no sound coming from this side. 
this is the side that our door is on. It's all coming from this side with the, um, with the road right here. So we've added this mass loaded vinyl. This is a half pound per square foot version of it. And it's going to add a little bit more material in there. The sound has to move in order to translate over to this other wall that we're going to be building on this other side. Again, I would not spend the money on this if this is your only strategy. The first thing that we're doing is we're decoupling. I would spend your money there first. Build a separate wall, put fluffy stuff in the middle, make both walls as massive as you can. That's where your money is well spent. This was a experiment. I've never really used this stuff before, so I'm gonna see how well it works, see if I can tell the difference. I don't know how I'm gonna test it. If you have any good ideas of how to test this assembly versus the assembly on the other wall, which will not have it, um, maybe we can do a speaker and a DB meter on the other side of the wall or something. I don't know, all of y'all guys are really smart. Comment below on the test rig I should rig up to see if this makes any difference at all. At any rate, it was 200 bucks for 50 feet of it. I figured, eh, what the heck. You notice that it is floppy, right? We have fiberglass behind that, we have the spray foam behind that, and this is floppy. We want it floppy. We don't want to sandwich this between two pieces of sheetrock. We could, it would add mass to the wall, but that's all it's going to be doing is adding mass to the wall when it's sandwiched in between. You might as well save a little bit of money and just put another layer of sheetrock. You're going to be better, money better spent, and it's going to be much heavier than this half pound per square foot. We keep it floppy like this because as the sound travels and hits the wall, it's got to shake the wall because we've taken care of all of the air sealing from the, from the spray foam. So it's not going to be able to come through and diffract through any small holes. We've got all of the air sealed off. So the only way that sound can get in here is it's going to shake that wall. It's going to shake the wall. It's a two by four wall with siding and spray foam. It's not going to have that big of a problem shaking that wall. Once it shakes that wall, then it's got to shake the air on the inside. It starts shaking the air on the inside. But remember, we've got all of this, this uh, fiberglass in there that as it's shaking that air, that air has to go through all these little channels and pathways and it burns up a whole lot of energy getting absorbed and turned into heat inside that fiberglass. Then it hits this thing. And now it's like, all right, I've made it through the air cavity and now I'm hitting a big floppy mass vinyl that I've got to shake again. But man, this stuff just does not want to shake. It's like the difference between a guitar string when you have it really taut, bing, you're going to get a sound. When you loosen it a bunch, it's, a, it's not going to make that same sound because the sound doesn't want to travel through loose floppy stuff. So this is going to absorb even more energy. Then we have another wall that's completely decoupled from our two by fours on the outside. The only path that we have for the sound to go through is through our floor. It's gonna be completely decoupled from our ceiling, completely decoupled from the walls. The floor, we're gonna have a foam, um, uh, uh, foam gasket underneath to give it a little bit more separation. And then this wood is sitting on foam again. And then that goes down to the subfloor, which is connected to the outside wall. So you are going to get some flanking. Flanking is a word that we use in soundproofing to talk about how sound can go around whatever um, impediment to your, to your sound transmission that you have. So the sound wants to go through here and there's a whole bunch of stuff and it's too much of a pain. Well, if it can go through the floor, back up and re-emit, then all of this money that you spent on this wall is for not. So we're going to try to decouple as much as we can on the floor as well, but the wall is completely decoupled. So what's this wall out here shakes, tries to go through the, the fiberglass, has to shake this. Now it hits another layer of fiberglass on this side that it's got to go through. Then finally it hits my sheetrock, my drywall on the inside. And I'm going to be doing two layers a 5 eighths inch drywall. That's going to be a super massive wall and it's going to be completely airtight again. We're going to have a completely sealed airtight shell and I think we're going to be putting a wood treatment on it too which is more for decoration um, but it still will add mass to the wall. So then this air finally gets through here and it's got to shake that wall too and it's lost so much energy as it goes through there. The hope is that it's not going to be able to shake this wall very well and then once it's shaking this wall the air on this side starts vibrating, goes up to my ear, and I hear this sound. So 
That is our strategy for the wall. Thanks so much for watching. Comment below what would you do differently if I've learned anything about soundproofing and the internet and YouTube. I know you have an opinion on what you would do differently. Comment below. If you have any great articles on how to educate the greater building community on how to do effective soundproofing, link us, link, put it put it in the dibbly doos the, the comments down below. Do that too. Um, subscribe if we've earned it. Like the video if we liked it. Share it with somebody. Tell them, hey, this guy's doing something. Go follow us over at Instagram at Smith House Co. at Jordan Smith Bills, and we'll see you next time on Smith House. shoes like all the zooms they say wear your pants at least you're wearing pants i'm wearing pants but no shoes no shoes no shoes you embarrassed now i am embarrassed now all right